quickly. I don't want to hold it anymore. Oh, it's so pretty. Look at this. Look at our catch. Catch of the day, guys. Catch and cook. Yeah. Six years ago, we had a wild idea. Buy a sailboat and cross the Atlantic. Just because. I mean, why not? We had no clue about sailing, but we were looking for something different, a challenge. So we started planning, plotting and preparing. And six years later, here we are, on the Atlantic, on our own sailboat. And today, we finally make landfall. After 19 days and seven hours, we will drop anchor and say, been there, done that. And you know what? It was not at all what I imagined it would be. It was amazing, it was challenging, easy and hard. It was pretty exhausting and it is one of the best days of our lives when we finally see the shapes of the Caribbean islands show up on the horizon. We did it, we made it. Every sailor's dream just came true. the night shift. It's nice today. Usually we have squalls during the night and we did have one or two, but they were really tiny and we didn't need to dodge them. So now we are 800 miles away. We're doing good speeds tonight too. The sea is kind of stirry at night and it's worse, but that keeps pushing us with five knots and a really tiny headsail and really tiny genoa, which is nice because then there's no need to reef, there's no need to react really, you can just go. The timer's on the phones just to wake up after our snoozies. It's a good night. Maybe I'm gonna get the iPad and watch some episodes. To be honest, I think I'm going to miss that. It's cool to be moving and seeing the stars and once in a while you get this killer freak wave from the side. It wakes you up. Then a banging Genoa wakes you up. You're supposed to be awake, so it's a good thing. So you can still hear and see that we're surfing, even though everything's reefed and everything's supposed to slow us down, but this boat just like, it's so out of the water that it just keeps on going. Sometimes the waves are breaking behind us and yesterday one actually came into the cockpit. It like, it happened so fast. Everything was like this and then all of a sudden from the back I just heard a big BAM! Explosion kind of sound. Everything just hit the stern and Waves came in through the netting and Mandy got wet because she was on the side. But if it was not for this net and me standing there, we probably would have lost some controls here. Because since everything is kind of out of the water, it's not completely waterproof and it's just like 12 weld sockets, the autopilot's there, the plotter's there. It probably would have short-circuited and break some stuff. That's actually how friends of ours lost their autopilot midway and then they had to hand steer for 1200 miles. Oh my god. don't think I get to enjoy the sailing as much as I used to. I don't get to sit on deck much and if I do he's always crying within 10 minutes after I go on deck. <laughs> this is, it makes it harder to enjoy. It's pretty tough you know taking care of a baby whilst being tossed around in a boat for 20, 20 days. It's not easy. I'm so happy we're doing it. Would you do it again? I don't know. Now that you know that what it is would you have done it? in the first place again? This trip, yeah, the Cape Verde one, I don't think so. The Cape Verde was really bad. That that broke me almost. Yeah. But this one's been good. It's it's 
hard and it's I think for many people this is already mentally hard you know 20 days at sea always moving taking care of you know cooking and cleaning and personal hygiene and sleeping and all of it it's like a hard job right but if 12 hours of that time you're trying to entertain a six-month-old baby you need to hold it that's another level of yeah, toughness the, the to sailing it. gets um, secondary right yeah and I, I find that too bad because I really enjoy the sailing yeah. it's like the third time I sit on deck in 14 days it's mainly because I have to put diapers in the anchor locker <laughs> It's nice though. When I'm here again and he's sleeping, I, I know why I like it. I think passage is also different from cruising. Cruising is fine. I can do this for two days. If it gets longer than that, it becomes it becomes tougher. Yeah. A passage is something else. Huh? Yeah. Whoa, that's a big one. Yeah. We were breaking. Whoa. These mountains. Also, today's maybe a bit tougher this morning because we have a pretty disturbed sea. So it's really, really bouncy. Plus, we're almost there. Like, depending on how many knots we're actually surfing down a wave, we sometimes only take five more days. I think six is realistic. We'll be there in six days. So, you know, you can feel the end coming near and that, that makes the anticipation of arriving, like, higher. And then it makes the days feel longer. This is a pretty shitty weak spot. Um, the bolt on the gooseneck is not a nut on the outside, it's a cleavage pin on the middle. And the thing moves its way through. So there's way too much space here compared to the other side. So I tried to make some spacers out of some thin Liros line to keep it centered. It works more or less and it keeps you through a season of cruising. But on an Atlantic crossing, this is. Honestly. Yeah, we'll show you. Um, oh, it's fucking hooks like weighing. Oh no, it's not. Oh, what is that? I don't know, but it's ugly. Oh no, I'm not gonna eat that. Oh, oh, no! Oh, it's so slimy. I can't <laughs> Get away, fish. Get away. <laughs> The gloss, too much on that one. Oh, oh no. Oh. Yeah. Stinky. Nasty bit. Five days left if we keep going at six and a half knots, which is unlikely because conditions are getting gradually more intense. And we do hope they go back to normal at one point, which means we will slow down, but that's time to clean up and take a breath because right now. It is so stirry and choppy and it feels like the Alberon Sea, but higher and steeper. Well, I don't dislike it, but after two days it gets a bit old. So Hydrovein is keeping course quite well. We're still wing on wing, it's trying to get a bit north. The Viking Explorers rally is like north of us, 60 to 70 miles. And they're heading for Grenada and we're heading to Martinique, which means we need to go Further up even, but it's fine. It's still about 700 miles left, which is more or less the distance from Canary Islands to the Cape Verde Islands. But now it feels like we're almost there, which is strange. How are you feeling? A bit much at the moment. Let's try to do dishes with Navy. Now we've been doing dishes, so at least we can cook again soon. Oh god. Well. Bit of a mess down there. I've been trying to keep it clean. It's just hard with so many people that toss shit around and a baby that has a lot of toys to, you know, not get bored and five square meters. But this morning was really good. And then the afternoon was okay and then it got a bit crazy. Yep. Hey, look at the sail. Now look at the waves. I bet it doesn't look too bad on camera.
think we all had a pretty good night. Squalls are gone. It's pretty peaceful at night. The wind dies down again. The waves die down again. So like we're doing we're doing five and a half already. All right. Yeah, just slowly getting pushed along. It's really nice. Um, I had a good night of sleep. I think the others had too. There's lots of flying fish around. It's a nice morning. Sun shining. It's been a quiet night, huh? Mm -hmm. Since it's not too roly yet. We haven't changed course yet. I'm gonna bait Levi. Because the poor guys had one bath since we left <laughs> 14 days ago. He's excited. Ah. I just pulled all the shampoos down the old box. <laughs> Are you making a bit of a mess of the bathroom today? This is not so friend in the waves. What are you doing? I'm trying to cook a, a meal whilst the waves keep pushing us so far aside my pan almost every time flies off the stove. And it's pretty quiet. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's okay and then it just hits us all of a sudden and everything goes everywhere. Including Levy, trying to put him between pillows. It's alright, but he keeps waking up. So I keep running over there to keep him asleep so I can finish this crazy idea that I had that I should make a risotto, which is too much work really. But you know, I started it, so I gotta finish it. I just need a second before I can get up and do this again. It's a weird, like, sea monster looking for a What the f*** is that? Look at the teeth on that shit! Oh my god! Like, that is a sea monster. That doesn't look like anything I want to eat, though. No! Look how shiny it is! It's like silver! Yeah. I think it's edible? No. We wondered if we could attach anything else, but when we do, it's just freaky. Didn't I say before, like, about the sea monsters? Alex, give it a name. Um, Fred. Fred? Yeah! We have to look it up. Probably an endangered species. 
<laughs> this, this one's definitely endangered right now. Yeah. <laughs> Last oh, one of its yeah. kind. I've never seen anything that looks I like that. I've never seen anything like that. That is the weirdest looking thing. Yeah, it's horrible. Wow, it's so ugly. Mate, there's no way I'm waiting. I'm taking the hook out of that while it's alive. No. <laughs> no chance. That will eat you. That, that will eat you. I guarantee you it's got an expanding belly. Yeah, it's, it's just, just big enough for you. Your whole arm's gonna be in it. I thought barracuda were bad. That, that looks like a that, fucking that nightmare is. fish. Ah, oh, it's so gross. <laughs> that is slimy. That's that's that is so horrible. horrible. That's fing slimy, man. That's next level fing slimy. <laughs> Why? Why did you not put the lure back out after dark? Uh, in. This is a oh, night. This is what comes out at night when the mahi disappear. This is what comes out. Oh, well done, mate. Well done. Quickly, I don't want to hold it anymore. Oh, it's so pretty. Look at this. Look at our catch. Catch of the day, guys. Catch and cook. Are you sure it. you want to name that Fred? No. It's not a Fred. No, it's a threat. It's a threat. It is a threat. <laughs> All right, throw it back out. Goodbye. Thank you for your adventure time. Thanks for your entertainment. The weather pattern was really strange this time around. Um, apparently, it's never like that. Like you don't have to do all these extra things, and you don't have all these squall lines and, and weird non-Atlantic swell conditions. Hello. We consider ourselves to be very lucky with the weather. We were a bit slower than the rest of the group that we were going with and they encountered way worse conditions, way heavier storms and also lots of no wind zones. And I think because we did not motor through in the beginning, we kind of got a heads up of what was coming and um, it was almost gone once we got there. So we motored for, I don't know, a few hours yesterday and that was basically it, except for the beginning course but where the engine just didn't do anything because of the prop and the barn and the muscles on the bottom but yeah we take like two days longer maybe three days longer but these other ships are 46 foot or they're going a different route or they use the engine for days so yeah we come we arrive with half a tank yeah. we use 35 liters so that's considering this is a 2000 plus mile crossing that's pretty good I think how are you feeling? Feeling really good considering everything. I mean, I just had my, uh, my late shift, which is actually quite a nice one. It's just exhausting then somewhere during the day, but when you do the shift, it's good. And uh, it's been a super quiet night. Like, the swell conditions are amazing. They're, it's really flat, and sometimes the swell comes straight from behind, so we're kind of surfing. I like six and a half knots, even though the boat's not moving. It's been really comfortable. Yeah, it's been a really good night, and I look forward to the next two days because it's going to be the last two days. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, in a way, it feels like we've been on this boat forever. Don't really remember a different life anymore. <laughs> and on on the other hand, it's just it's gone pretty quick, hasn't it? Yeah. I mean, we've had mostly comfortable conditions. I was really afraid we we're gonna get the same kind of trip like from Cape Verde down, which was freaking horror. And uh, we haven't, we've been lucky. I mean, it's been hard, maybe, it's not easy, but. It helps if the trip is good. But the trip has been really good and that really helps. Yeah, yeah it's been nice. We've actually been a little bit bored the last two days, huh? Yeah. Which is new. <laughs> it's been good. So much fun in the water last time you're going again? Yeah, it's going to be great. <laughs> what are you going to do? Props fouled again. It went quickly this time, so I have to do it again. So we're motoring the next two days. 
one left in the motor with four knots. And pilot vibrations. That's a great. Um, do you want to set up the blue line first? Do you have something to no, hold on to? It. Really? Yeah. I think we'll be too quick for you to manage. Yeah, we do one and a half knots every time and again. Good luck, babe. Thank you. The cold. We're nice and warm. Nice and seaweedy, especially. Prop really that bad? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's full of seaweed. Seemed to take you less time than last time. Well, let's see if it gives us a knot extra and less vibrations. So that means now we might make it in a day and four hours if we do six knots. Yeah, but we won't. A day and uh, then have to go in again. Be more optimistic. All right, we can do it. We can do it. Go back to seven! So far, we have been able to sail almost all of the 2,000 miles that lie behind us. But as Martinique slowly shows up on the horizon, 
the winds start to die down more and more. We are eager to make landfall, and with these winds that will take us days. So we fire up the good old 29 horsepowers. On our last night, we get lucky as Mother Nature decides to send just enough wind our way for a few quiet hours of sailing sleep. And before we know it, we are watching our last sunrise on the Atlantic. That's why I've been trying to wake you up for a while. It's still rising. It's not up yet. It's the last one, baby. 20 days. Ready. What are you most excited about? Two things. Seeing all of our friends again gonna be so good and swimming it may maybe maybe more swimming I just really want to swim I think one of the best things was catching our own fish and then eating it we just had so much of it with every meal it was just really good that was something I didn't expect really seven miles yeah yeah they were big mostly bagels fish your breakfast apple pancake. Also, but I'm happy that we had some really good sails also days like where it was really nice, mm. just comfortable. I was happy about the second half of it. Yeah, the second half was really good. Like once we got through the storm, yeah. everything was amazing. Yeah, that's true. switch flags again so we uh, of course got the flag for Martinique because we're going to Martinique but uh, it turns out that before you check in you actually have to fly a French flag which of course we don't have but I got an extra Dutch flag and lucky for us the colors are the same so we uh, you know repurposed it temporarily to make it into a French flag I'm taking my sweet time Feels right Living in the moment Cause I know where I'm going I'm taking my sweet time It's time I started seeing that the good life has a hundred Talk to my future on a first name basis Cause life is what you make it Now I'm realizing that everything I face and set the stage I know who I am and I don't need to fake it Cause I already made it Taking my sweet time back back in civilization we made it to Martinique we are now 10 miles of the coast aren't we only yeah yeah 10 miles it is two hours before sunset and we need one and a half hours to Saint Anne which is just around the southeast corner of Martinique we're just crawling around the, the lighthouse and find our friends who are in the Saint Anne anchorage which is apparently filled with hundreds of boats. We got four boats waiting for us. We all left at the same time. We are the last to come in. So we are naturally happy to also arrive. So we're just gonna go straight in and throw anchor for the night for the first time after 19 days. A bit longer than we expected, but it's been pretty good so far. Quite comfortable. You've been doing okay. You had a good trip. 
I just suppose that means yes. Are you excited to arrive? Ah, there's life around us everywhere. Flying fish, seagulls, all kinds of bird animals that get that flying fish in their mouthies. It's really green. The island is super green. I did not expect that. There's sailboats on the horizon. There's chatter on VHF. We are back. It feels so good to be here. Can't wait to throw anchor. So, as soon as you get into shallow waters of about 20 meters, there's lobster pots everywhere. And if you're lucky, they are marked with a plastic bottle, if you're lucky. So now we're kind of rushing it. Uh, we got into deeper waters along the ridge up north to St. Anne. Um, but we have to get into shallow waters in about 20 minutes and the sun just set. Uh, it's gonna get dark in probably 25. So we'll try to make it to the anchorage and push it a bit. But it seems like the prop is fouled again, which is f***ing annoying. So let's see tomorrow what the damage is and just get there now. It's so green, isn't it? It's amazingly green, yeah. It's amazing. Are you excited too, little baby? Happy 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 yeah. So, yeah, and I ate all but mine. But I don't eat my chocolate. Like, and he gets offended oh, that there's still chocolate. Away. He's like, you bought so much just for like, yourself. I'm like, no, it's just still the same chocolate. Hey guys, what's up? Today we are in beautiful Grenada. Thank you for watching The Crossing. That's it. Now we're gonna start Caribbean cruising and exploring the real Caribbean, guys. In other news, if you haven't seen the last episode, we are creating Liverboard Academy, the program for you who wants to start their own adventure. It's not gonna be a sailing school. We wouldn't dare to do that. We're gonna teach you how to live aboard and make life on the water easy for you. It's gonna be a video course. It's gonna be a mentorship. It's going to be a community. It's gonna be ever evolving because we're gonna add content later on and it's gonna be great. You can see the curriculum soon, but first we need to know what you wanna know and we have a survey for that. So click the link below, fill out the survey and enjoy life. Have a great week, see you next time, bye. All right. This is our uh, Atlantic souvenir. We've been carrying it around for days now kept it on purpose. It's the last flying fish of the ocean. And it doesn't smell anymore after like four days of drying in. I'm gonna put it on your pizza, I guess. Yeah. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you for the ride. Thank you and sorry. Bye-bye, woo! Oh. <laughs> Swim, little fish.